Namaskar and today we will have a deliberation on new education policy Bharati Gyan Parampara uh, that is also called Indian knowledge system in English. So national education policy talks about Bharati Gyan Parampara Indian knowledge system and before we go into that issue uh, and a discussion for about next uh, half an hour let me introduce myself my name is Dr. Pavan Kumar Singh. I am presently working as director of Indian Institute of Management, Tiruchira Palli. And uh, I have background uh, in the field of uh, human side of management. Uh, for about 33 years, I am in academics. I have served in uh, almost uh, all uh, systems of higher educational institutions, including state universities at uh, Ujjain and Kanpur. Central University at Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. I have worked also at a national institute, that is National Institute of Industrial Engineering at Mumbai. And then I joined Indian Institute of Management, Indore as a professor. Uh, I have also served as the Director of Management Development Institute, Gurgaon. And uh, I was uh, Academic Chair of the first committee of uh, Indian Institute of Management, Sambalpur. So this is my journey, uh, but most importantly, I am a learner, I am a student and a professor in the field of organizational behavior and human resource management. I have been working uh, for last 20 years uh, in the field of Indian knowledge system, scriptures and interpretation of Sanskrit scriptures for managerial uses. So let us begin this topic, new education policy that talks about Indian knowledge system, Bharati Gyan Parampara. We would like to see in brief that what national education policy says about Bharati Gyan Parampara and then we will see exactly what is Bharati Gyan Parampara because purpose of this video, this interaction with you is that inter you should be able to actually convince and interact with larger audience that uh, how Bharati Gyan Parampara and its spirit can be embedded into our education system how Bharati Gyan Parampara can be intertwined uh, with uh, whatever subject you are dealing. You may be dealing with science or art or social science, uh, humanities or uh, agriculture or medicine or engineering. So these all issues will be a very joyful journey for all of us, let us say in next 25 minutes or so. So national education policy is emphasizing that our final product of educational system allow me to use the word product that final product that is a student set of students they should be emerged they should be emerging after the education system as a wholesome personality very very deeper into their own subject knowledge highly useful for society very sensitive to the issues around them and uh, they should prove themselves as asset for the nation so national education policy, it emphasizes that uh, basic values of human beings, which is called human values and values means conviction. So basic human values, which are time tested characteristics, for example, this is say righteousness is a value, honesty is a value, commitment to satya, nishtha, satya that is truth. Nishtha means commitment, commitment to nation, commitment to even cause of humanity across the globe or uh, commitment to your uh, state, your institution, your neighborhood, your family, commitment to yourself. All these basic values must be embedded naturally in our final product and that is students. But before students learn all these values, we also, we means we professors, teachers, need to remind ourselves about the Indian knowledge system, Bharati Gyan Parampara. So national education policy says that these all uh, knowledge system, which was from time immemorial in India, in Indian knowledge system of ancient time was naturally embedded. We have to actually start looking the merit uh, of those aspects and should try to reinvent those methodologies, those content and should bring the best part of that in contemporary education system. So 
uh, we need to understand Indian knowledge system. We need to understand the contextual implication and uh, its implementability. Uh, on these issues, I would like to talk about. See, when we talk about Indian knowledge system, first of all, I will remind my fellow colleagues who are listening this video that uh, you see what happens you may be a professor of physics or professor of political science or professor of management or faculty of Hindi or English. What happens? You enter in the class uh, after doing some other job. You were engaged into something else. Suddenly you enter in the class. If students are engaged in something else. They are rushing into the class. And with that emotion which was affecting them or influencing them five minutes back, with that emotion, they start learning a subject in a classroom. Professor, the kind of emotion he or she was carrying just five minutes back, two minutes back, with that he or she is coming and with that emotion he starts teaching. The first and very, very primary, but very, very, let us say, uh, priceless lesson that I am trying to submit to you uh, for your consideration and application in your life that in earlier days, according to Indian knowledge system, according to Bharati Gyan Parampara, before the dissemination of knowledge would start, the faculty, the guru, the acharya, the teacher used to invite students to a two or three minutes episodes of maintaining silence, closing the eyes, let breath get settled, because settled breath is the right kind of field on which you can sow the seed of your uh, germination of knowledge. So, before classes would begin, according to Bharati Gyan Parampara, we used to practice silence or we used to chant some, let us say, profound mantra. For example, there are many mantras uh, which have been used as invocation part of various Upanishads. For example, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinah, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Bhakashya Dukkha Bhag Bhavet, chanting, two minutes silence, then chemistry can start, botany can start, or the chanting can be Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvinavadhita Mastumavidvishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. We should know the meaning of this invocation. You can easily find in the literature. I am not giving you meaning here because we have many things to talk in this video. But what I am trying to actually uh, impress upon is uh, before we enter from one episode, one episode to another episode, we should create a moment of silence or prayerfulness so that we enter the new episode with fresh blood, with fresh, let us say, psychological mood, uh, with uh, great enthusiasm. Because wise people, they allow their positive emotion earned from previous episode to influence the new episode. And wise people do not allow any negative emotion impacting their previous episode on the new episode. And that's why to be more wise for the new episodic task, we should be better prepared. This is just an example. Indian knowledge system, Bharati Gyan Parampara always believed in creating a complete human being. Complete human being means what? You see, any student who has started the study education from say nursery, KG, class 1, class 2, 3 years graduation, 4 years graduation, master degree, PhD. So journey from let us say nursery to PhD. Indian knowledge system emphasizes on wholesome development of personality. But during this journey, a particular student would specialize only in one subject, let us say. If you are specialized in medicine, and within medicine so many specialization, you cannot say that I am also engineer. 
दो यू मे बी नोइंग सम मशीनरी हियर एंड देयर बट डॉक्टर्स एम बी बी एस एम डी पी एच डी इन मेडिसिन दे आर इन टू वन फील्ड ऑफ मेडिसिन इंजीनियर्स आर इन टू देयर ओन फील्ड ऑफ द ब्रांच वन पर्टिकुलर ब्रांच ऑफ द इंजीनियरिंग इफ यू हैव स्टडीड सोशल साइंस अप टू दैट लेवल देन यू आर पी एच डी इन पोलिटिकल साइंस और एटलीस्ट एम ए इन पोलिटिकल साइंस ना ए पोलिटिकल साइंस मास्टर डिग्री होल्डर कैनॉट क्लेम दैट आई एम ऑल्सो मास्टर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री मे बी नोइंग समथिंग ऑफ केमिस्ट्री पॉइंट इज बींग एम्फोसाइज हेयर इज दैट दैट फर्स्ट टारगेट इज दैट वेन यू आर स्टडिंग ए सब्जेक्ट फॉर लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन यू हैव टू डेवलप वन स्पेशलाइजेशन एम एस सी केमिस्ट्री इज वन स्पेशलाइजेशन आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट स्पेशलाइजेशन फ्रॉम रिसर्च एंगल बट फ्रॉम सब्जेक्ट एंगल एम एस सी केमिस्ट्री एम एस सी बॉटनी एम एस सी फिजिक्स एम एस सी और एम ए मैथमेटिक्स और एम ए सोशोलॉजी और एम ए होम साइंस वॉट एवर दिस नॉलेज मस्ट बी एट द डीपेस्ट लेवल पॉसिबल मीन्स देर मस्ट बी ए वर्ल्ड लेवल लेट एस से डिस्कोर्स ऑन दैट सब्जेक्ट सो दैट इंडिया और इंडियंस वेन दे स्टडी अबाउट ए सब्जेक्ट मस्ट बी एट पार विद द वर्ल्ड लेवल नॉलेज इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट वट एवर सब्जेक्ट यू आर स्टडी बट देर हैज टू बी डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंटीग्रेटेड पर्सनैलिटी होल सम पर्सनैलिटी ना वट इज दिस यू सी द बाइफरकेशन और द माइंड विच डिवाइड्स हैज टू गो अवे एंड द अप्रोच और माइंड और सिस्टम दैट इंटीग्रेट्स हैज टू बी इन्वाइटेड सो दो आई एम डूइंग लेटर से एम ए इन हिंदी बट आई मस्ट हैव सर्टन साइंटिफिक परसूट एंड दो आई एम डूइंग एम एस सी इन फिजिक्स आई मस्ट हैव सम सोशल साइंस ओरिएंटेशन i take for example um, one of the greatest scientists the world has produced albert einstein at his fag end of life he talks like sociologist he talks like philosopher he talks like use of science not simply inventing something some machinery or some uh, sutra or formula or e is equal to mc square he is not talking that now he is talking about the use and misuse of science that's why those professors or those students who are into the science stream which we call as science stream everything is science but so called science stream physics chemistry mathematics botany zoology geology must have artistic heart and those who are into social science and, and, and social science and those who are in social science and humanities they must have scientific approach so distinction between science and art has to go away similarly academic program versus vernacular uh, or let us say um, uh, or academic academic programs and uh, say trade related skills education uh, a kind of distinction we have created has to go away because we have divided education in many ways and that is not serving the purpose we should rather unite so science and art dichotomy has to go away education versus vocational study has to go away english versus vernacular has to go away because um, um, we have to become multilinguistic also so that we are able to learn a language which is worldwide accepted learn a language which in most of the part of the country is accepted learn a language to be effective in a particular state in which i am living and maybe we should learn a language which is devavani devabhasha sanskrit which is mother of many languages we should learn we should try to learn two languages three languages possibly four languages because more we learn more we are able to integrate so indian knowledge system does not know dividing it knows integrating so as i see knowledge as such irrespective of any stream we are talking about knowledge itself is a big lake big pool brimming with water thodi si main aapko hindi mein bata dun ye jo gyan hai chahe wo kisi srot se aa raha ho 
वो एक झील की तरह है ज्ञान ज्ञान की झील और पानी वहां लबालब भरा हुआ है द लेक ऑफ नॉलेज इज ब्रिमिंग विथ वाटर दे इज नो डर्थ ऑफ वाटर पानी की कमी नहीं है एंड देर आर मेनी घाट्स ऑन विच यू कैन टेक बाथ और यू कैन यू कैन कलेक्ट वाटर वन घाट इज नोन एज फिजिक्स अदर घाट इज नोन एज केमिस्ट्री अदर घाट इज नोन एज सोशोलॉजी अदर घाट इज नोन एज हिस्ट्री इट इज लाइक दैट सो से इफ यू रीड ए सब्जेक्ट दैट इज साइंस विथ ए हार्ट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी यू वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू नो दैट हाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर इन्वेंशन विल हैव सोशियोमेट्रिक लेट एस से डायमेंशन और हाउ इट विल एक्चुअली इन्फ्लुएंस ह्यूमैनिटी बिकॉज आफ्टर ऑल यू आर ए साइंटिस्ट टू सर्व द कॉज ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी और सर्व द कॉज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड और यू आर सोशल साइंटिस्ट और ह्यूमैनिटी एक्सपर्ट फॉर द कॉज ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी ऑनली इन फोर्टीन सेंचुरी द आदि कवि ऑफ बेंगोली चंडीदास हेड सेड शवार ऊपरे मानुस सत्तो ताहार ऊपरे नहीं इट इज ए बेंगोली प्रोवर स्टेटमेंट गिवन बाई चंडीदास इन फोर्टीन सेंचुरी it means that the cause of humanity is above everything nothing is above that so ultimately whether we learn or teach physics or we learn or teach say botany or we learn or teach uh, political science or we learn or teach management ultimate purpose is service to humanity so this is very important di- dimension of this is very important dimension of bhartiya gyan parampara indian knowledge system the second characteristics of indian knowledge system is that knowledge should be available to everyone now you see of course uh, we should follow the rules of copyright or uh, no plagiarism policy zero tolerance for plagiarism we should all follow whenever we take knowledge from somebody else piece uh, we should refer uh, but you see in indian knowledge system greatest of the greatest writers authors they even did not like to put their name as author nobody knows who is the author of vedas or upanishads vedas have been compiled and uh, disseminated by ved vyas in the beginning nobody knows the author of a particular upanishad because upanishads generally are parts or or the one of the chapters of a particular veda it's let us say it's it may be it's part of sangita or aranyak so there was a free flow of knowledge now when you see today the indian uh, diaspora we have eighth schedule of constitution there are 22 languages in that uh, schedule which are recognized till date by indian constitution apart from those 22 languages scheduled in uh, eighth schedule of constitution there are many other languages which have their own literature apart from all these there are many colloquial languages which are spoken languages and they are confined to a particular region there are languages which are actually used in oral communication only and literature is not much developed but they are uh, facing the danger of uh, getting extinct endangered languages india is also losing many languages so in today's context nap is also saying which is parallel to indian knowledge system bharatiya gyan parampara that we should respect all languages that is that is the beginning point but then we should try to understand to some extent multi languages what is the best available in which language for example english which is accepted language in india and major part of the world and the most connecting language of the world english is a wonderful language and i think everyone should know english so that it is conducive to feel like world citizen if you know the language which is mostly used by the world 
but indian knowledge system or any country oriented knowledge system would emphasize know your own languages also you know hindi in any part of the country you live knowing hindi will benefit anyone no hindi please it is not getting imposed or being imposed but you not knowing you will invite certain kind of limitations upon yourselves only and when you learn hindi it is a wonderful language either the prose part or poetry part if you see the prose part there have been great novels there have been uh, story books there have been this uh, you know, drama books in hindi there have been short story books in hindi there have been sanskrit translation of uh, various uh, popular uh, story oriented books uh, of sanskrit like panchatantra or katha sarit sagar or hitopadesh they are available in hindi enjoy that and if you go to the poetry part of hindi wonderful poets they have contributed to the language of hindi and you belong to any state try learning and you will find that poetry is giving you a uh, scintillation it is charging you with uh, energy and pride for your own country there have been many great poets now poets like let us say malik muhammad jaisi in hindi or contemporaries were like kabir or tulsi or raskhan or rahim later on we find great poets under uh, various systems of literature development like ritukal or chhayawad uh, so we have sumitra andan pant we have jay shankar prasad we have surikant tripathi nirala uh, we have um, uh, see uh, mahadev verma we have uh, ramdhari singh dinkar we have uh, uh, maithili sharan gupt we have subhadra kumari chauhan read no and if you want to know let us say some literature which are basically uh, oriented towards uh, uh, present punjab that is in the part of the country or there was one integrated punjab some portion went to pakistan in that area also uh, punjabi literature flourished try to know about let us say what is the writing of farid what is writing of bulle shah then uh, see in rajasthan area many sufi saints they gave their literature uh, and they were rahasyawadi they wrote uh, about let us say supreme uh, lord or supreme power like dadu uh, from rajasthan uh, was very popular or when you go to gujarat we should try to know what narsi mehta is saying if we go to maharashtra see that what uh, guru ramdas has said if you go to karnataka please see what uh, Uh, poet great poet saint poet purandar das had to say if you go to tamil nadu in tamil tirukkural was written by tiruvalluvar enjoy it if you go to andhra pradesh enjoy the literature of vemana if you come to bengal so many uh, poets are there odisha uh, in bengal we had uh, ravindranath tagore we had kazi nazrul islam we had literature like raj tarangini so or if you go to seven sister, uh, eight, eight sisters if you go to seven sisters of northeast there have been many many literature short stories and these stories are very heart touching uh, uttar pradesh of course bihar so many poets came uh, uttar pradesh has been place of poets uh, in uh, hindi in bihar we had uh, uh, maithili poet uh, um, very popular there uh, and uh, then uh, if you come to madhya pradesh there have been uh, many poets in that area uh, especially from hoshangabad area and other areas so india has so many rich languages it will be not possible for us to know all the languages but national education policy is also emphasizing on rejuvenating the literature of india by providing translation supports and through these translation support we will be able to know in our own language which i know about the contribution of multi languages which are existing in india so 
what i'm trying to say as the second point the first point was have respect for all subjects second point is that have respect for india through so many approaches and one approaches that know your languages we are custodian of many languages so that is number 2 number 3 that indian knowledge system how it can be imbibed in our education system so that uh, faculty institution society especially students they get the best of the best knowledge in their own area of specialization embedded with indian knowledge system bhartiya gyan parampara say for example when we take mathematics india was advanced in mathematics astronomy there is indian system of astronomy which is highly scientific there is subject like botany in field of botany we have actually one veda upaveda that is ayurveda which is basically exploration of the field of botany and knowing various kinds of vanaspati and uh, their implication medicinal implications so whatever specialization you have indian knowledge system can be embedded irrespective of whatever subject you are teaching as a professor or whatever subject a student is is studying at any level so i would suggest this is a, this is just a proposal for your consideration that indian knowledge system can be embedded in our education right from beginning uh, education meant for children up to education meant for let us say phd level degree how it can be done see during class 1 2 3 up to class 3 in schooling because schooling we cannot uh, ignore if we are only dealing even though we are getting salary out of working into higher education system we should not lose the sight of schooling in class 1 2 3 bring the best of the stories being shared in our literature which is which have which have developed from our own original sources even research findings in psychology say that uh, the kind of stories you share with your children in your childhood actually impacts also the economic health of the nation so those nations which share very very relevant stories with children which gives the sense of achievement to the children which gives let us say fulfillment towards task or fulfillment um, of living by accomplishing the task the nation which shares such stories actually their per capita electricity consumption and per capita national income is higher so the type of stories that schooling nation is studying impacts the economic indicators of nation let us share in class 1 2 3 when a student has gone to class 5 6 7 etc let them have the best of the best maxims available in our literature just for your knowledge and many of you may be knowing veda is one not four but four parts were done because syllabus would become heavy so ved vyas quadrifurcated and each part was given to one particular disciple so for example rig ved was given to pal and uh, uh, sumantu was given athar ved and uh, jamini was given uh, sam ved and vaishampayan was given uh, yajur ved ved is one four parts were done there are 219 upanishads available in the market 191 easily and rest of them with a little more efforts and there are 18 puranas there uh, uh, are great books of history for example mahabharat 1300 shlokas and ramayan by valmiki literature of shankaracharya and uh, literature of raman maharshi and uh, shukraniti or manusmriti uh, or let us say uh, yog vasisht these all are precious books three great stories books as i said earlier panchatantra katha sarit sagar hitopadesha all in sanskrit wonderful books non sanskrit books i'll come let us say 
Ramcharit Manas, very popular, at least in northern part of India, Ramcharit Manas. And Ramayana is popular everywhere in the country, but by different authors. And Ramcharit Manas by Tulsidas is arguably the most popular book in the Hindi belt of the country. So these books are there. There are many other books. Let us come to some other books. For example, in, uh, in, in uh, Islam, there are two books, Holy Quran and Hadith. And uh, there is Zind Avesta in Zoroastrianism, Jin Sutra and Kalp Sutra, literature from, let us say, Jainism or Tripitak. And uh, part of that, uh, which is very popular, and uh, that is, uh, word, those are words of enlightened Gautam Buddha. So these all books and then books by many, many, let us say, saints and seers. We have book uh, Guru Granth Sahib, final compilation done by the 10th Guru, Guru Govind Singh Ji. And uh, six Gurus Vani are there and uh, there are 15 saints Vani and uh, about three or four, let us say, other uh, uh, servicemen who also used to write their Vani. So many things are there. So... These all, if are properly studied and their best of the best knowledge, quintessential knowledge brought into and can be given to a student the best of the best maxims during class 5, 6, 7, that is good, that is better. And during, say, intermediate programs or class 9th, because class 10th, I would suggest you should leave them for their matriculation exam. But class 9th, they should understand about certain books, certain literature, in intermediate or first year of graduation during that period, we should give them one full course of, on Indian knowledge system. Because Indian knowledge is not actually regional knowledge. It is world knowledge, world wisdom, and India is custodian. So during graduation or at the end of plus two level, they must have a full course on Indian knowledge system, whichever subject you are studying. And during post-graduation, there has to be Indian knowledge system or human values connected to your profession. For example, if somebody is doing MD, so Indian knowledge system and human values for doctors. If you are doing engineering or let us say M.Tech, then Indian knowledge system and engineering, pursuit of engineering in Indian knowledge system. In this way, we can create embedded Indian knowledge system inputs at various stages of education and in that course basically we would be able to make best use of Indian knowledge system and create this nation full of integrated personality who have got multidisciplinary knowledge who are actually meditated within rather agitated outside so with this there was uh, time uh, there is a time limit so with this I would wish that uh, first of all, we should invest ourselves in knowing Indian knowledge system, creating repository, uh, using translation uh, mechanism, and then convincing our nation, young uh, people, students who are actually, whose personality depends on what we teach them. And with this, I uh, wish you the best. Uh, may God charge us with uh, energy to understand the deeper repository of Indian knowledge system. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Thank you. Namaskar.